Welcome back to Beaver Today. Everyone knows that stately homes are packed to the brimmels with beautiful Rococo furniture, chinoiserie, lacquered furniture, chandeliers, china, crystal. But very rarely do they remember the wallpaper. Here at Beaver, we are incredibly famous for our chinoiserie paper. And right behind me here is a copy of the one of the most beautiful papers in the castle, the paper in the Wellington bedroom. This is an exact copy. I'm so excited I'm going to be speaking to Hannah. She runs a company called De Gournay Wallpapers. And what De Gournay have done is they've lovingly restored and copied the Wellington paper in our bedroom at Beaver exactly to this spec here. I love learning more about my home every day. And this has been a great journey learning about Chinese wallpaper with Hannah. So nice to be here, Hannah, and thank you so much for having me. And in this beautiful showroom, which has to be iconic on the Fulham Road, De Gournay. But before I start and finding out more about you and your journey here, tell me about who you are and exactly what you do. My name is Hannah Cecil Gurney. My father, Claude Cecil Gurney, founded De Gournay, our family business. I am now a director of the company alongside my sister, my cousin, my father, who's very much still involved. Um, so it's truly a family business, uh, just like yours. Um, I work more on the business development, PR, marketing, branding, kind of design side. So I'm very much involved in opening up new showrooms, um, exploring new markets, um, creative collaborations that we do, obviously the project that we did with you at Beaver Castle. Tell me, this paper that surrounds us here today, this is one that you've had made in China? Yes, exactly. So when my father started the business, um, his focus was on chinoiserie. So hand-painted Chinese wallpapers, very much reproducing the style and the effect of the 18th century ones. And most of his clients at the very beginning were people who had antique rooms of Chinese wallpaper that were in real states of disrepair. And they were so excited to find out that my father was faithfully reproducing these Chinese wallpapers in the same place using the same techniques, um, the same materials, so that they could actually put something very authentic in the place of something which had just been damaged you know, beyond repair. So there was no sense in keeping it up on the walls. And so to begin with, he was very focused on, you know, all the early installations were in historic homes, um, and very traditional. And slowly as the business developed, people realized that because everything we did was by hand, we actually had almost limitless bespoke capabilities. And so they started in the exact same way that in the 18th century, Europeans had started to influence what the Chinese artists then were painting. It was the same thing with my father's business. And slowly, the demand started to influence what our artists were painting. Um, and so we stretched ourselves and um, grew the kind of collections that we offered and different styles, different techniques. And this wallpaper in this room is a panoramic wallpaper. Um, so it's a painted scene, every inch of the panel is painted. Um, whereas the chinoiseries, you have trees, flowers, birds painted onto a silk or a paper. Um, here in this room, the entire panel's painted. And um, it's, there's sort of a, the scenic collection kind of shows vistas into exotic worlds or faraway places. And they're meant to kind of transport you away. And for us, you went around all our rooms, Hannah, at the castle and fell upon the Wellington room. T tell our, our viewers what it was about that room that really struck you and that paper. We've obviously been to lots of historic homes, um, looked at lots of antique Chinese wallpapers, and that one struck me because I felt like it was a very, very unique colour palette. 
The colors were so vibrant and strong. The design was incredibly dense. So it really like packed this amazing punch when you came into the room that you just couldn't, it just had had such strength to it that it really, you know, the whole room kind of was owned by this beautiful wallpaper. It had a uniqueness and all, the colors were just so beautiful. Wonderful kind of berry tones on a kind of pistachio green. It was beautifully preserved. So the condition of the paper is amazing. Um, and that's an exact, you know, beautiful example of still being able to enjoy, you know, that shows that um, 300 years on, you can still enjoy that room just as much. It's aged and it's got lots of marks and it's it's, it's gained a lot of patina from the passing of time, but still very, very beautiful. And, and just for our viewers, um, Hannah, just describe why this was so key. Because what date would that paper have been made? So we knew it would have been in the sort of early to mid 1700s, but I know that Dominic worked, Dominic, my cousin, worked very closely with your archivist um, and they found um, notes in the archives, uh, receipts for the wallpaper installers and ended up dating it to around 1753. Is that correct? Yeah, amazing. Amazing that they've still got that paperwork. And you then just talk me through the process of having made the decision that we were going to work together, we were going to, you chose that paper that you wanted to take forward. What was then your journey of what you had to do that I didn't see? Well, the first step, my cousin Dominic, our creative director, Gemma, um, myself, um, lots more people from our design team, we all came to be castle we spent lots of time in the in the early days of the project we spent a lot of time on site um with color books documenting the colors that were in the wallpaper making paint chips um studying the effect of the background and how many layers and tonalities of paint had been used to build up just the background alone before you even begin thinking about painting the design uh we studied the sizes of the sheets of paper that had been joined together when the wallpaper had been originally made. Um, so we would, we also photographed the room one-to-one -one so that we could document the placement of every leaf and butterfly, bird, flower, um, and really understand how each element had been painted. Because um, the focus with that room was on a very faithful reproduction to showcase to the modern day that nothing about how they were previously made needs to change. We can still create them today in the exact same way. And then what became so special about the project was the fact that you were about to um, redecorate what we've now, well, what, what, what's now been renamed the Howard Room, was called the Brown Room. Um, and suddenly I realized there was an opportunity to actually install a room of the paper so that it could become part of the history of the house. And in the same way that the paper in the Wellington has has survived so remarkably from 1753 to today, there's an opportunity, this de Gournay wallpaper that we've installed in the Howard room at the end of last year will still be there looking beautiful in 300 years' time. And with that, you've made history. What's actually on the wallpaper? Because we've named it the Wellington Beaver Castle. Beaver wall, yeah, the Beaver wallpaper in the Wellington colorway is the one that's in that sort of iconic pistachio green. Like all chinoiseries, it's a garden scene. So beautiful trees, blossoming flowers, peonies, chrysanthemums, plum blossom, exotic birds. Why do you think... Hannah, it's really important for brands like De Gournay to champion the old ways, the old skills, and important that you keep them going into the future. In the modern day, handcrafted products are so special and so unique. And the ability that we have to kind of tailor make these handcrafted wall coverings for people's homes is really special. And I don't think that the feeling that they give could ever be replicated by a machine-made product. And my father has always very much believed in the spirit resonance of the artist and that what makes the wall covering so special when you're inside a room of de Gournay wallpaper is the imperfections of the human hand, the fact that the artist, when he creates the wallpaper, leaves a part of his spirit in it forever. 
And when something's done by hand, the spirit of the artist is imprinted into that wallpaper, that vase, that carving forever, and lives on in the room. And that also your eye subconsciously kind of absorbs and understands all of these irregularities that make it so special and give it this kind of wabby savvy, which is the art of the, the perfection of the imperfection. Well, this is no mistake, and the Gournay is the most impressive family-run business that's been a joy working with you. And let's hope beaver wallpapers sell right across the world into the future. We absolutely loved working on the project, and it was, you know, it was all-consuming and spending time at the castle with you, with your family. The whole thing has been really, really magical for us um, with a beautiful result. And thank you so much for having me to talk about it. In our archives for the next thousand years, Hannah de Gournay, one very, very talented young lady. <laughs> <laughs>